Well, I work at this um, desk, which is fantastic because I can make it upright, I can make it flat, so I can alter the angle and put it up or down, which is really useful. I stand up to paint. And normally it's a, quite often a big painting, well, normally a big painting, so it covers the whole of this board. So I just lean over it. But this is a slightly smaller series I'm doing of these um, early iris. The brushes I use are actually quite small, really, and they're not that big. And I, use, I probably hold this collection of brushes and use whatever I want at the time. And then I have the thing in front of me. These, these are the backlit ones, so it's actually quite difficult. Look, you're looking into the light and it looks pretty well black, but you can just see, just make out different shapes. And with an, with an iris, they don't last that long, so I usually start off with one. And probably by the next morning, it's, um, it's like a changed position or it died or something or other. So you then have to go on and splice in another one. So it's quite tricky and it's uh, stressful. <laughs> I like the, my palette at the side. So everything's sort of um, fairly contained. And I just, you know, I lean over it and so I can see what I'm painting, which is quite near, near to me. And also see, this is why it's so important to be able to put this on the slope and stand back from it because it, you're too close to it you can't really make out the wood for the trees um, it's you know, one gets into a different place when you're painting really i suppose there is a thought process going on but it's hard to describe what it is and i think you sort of go into another you go into another um, i don't know you get absorbed in it and it, a lot of it is people you know because people ask you how you do something it's terribly difficult to describe how you're doing something because you're sort of doing it automatically really and and it, in some ways you don't want to make it conscious what you're doing is needs to come from the sub subconscious I think I, I listen to a lot of um, story tapes actually because that sort of takes my mind off what I'm doing enough that I can just sort of because it's a very you know it takes hours and days standing here Painting quite, you know, it's quite a slow process, so, you know, it can get quite boring, really, at times. So it's quite nice to have something that just takes your mind off it enough that you don't get bored and not too much that you're not thinking what you're doing. So I find story tapes quite useful. Um, and then it's just a question of... using the different brushes for different things. The edges are very, you know, I use this little brush for doing detailed work and, and the edges um, of something. I've, I find when I've been painting for a while, it sort of comes naturally that relating something that size to something this size, which is about seven times the life size, it sort of just comes as a matter of course. But to begin with, I do quite carefully measure things. So I might sort of, um, you know, if I've got a petal that like is, uh, that's not the petal I've got here, but if it was like that, then you just sort of walk it out seven times and you can sort of keep measuring things and comparing, always comparing one to the other, the height from the width, the, you know, all that sort of thing. And, but after a bit, after I've been doing it for a while, it just sort of, you can do it without having to keep measuring it. But it's quite a good way of checking because things are, it's, it's deceptive sometimes. If, you know, if something's coming towards you, it's very difficult. It's, you know, it's, you can't always, your eye, your brain takes over and it, it's telling you it's a long thing when it actually isn't. So it's quite good to be able to compare it and measure it. So I think it's quite important. With a, these very dark colours, it's quite useful to have a, you know, a, um, a bit of scrap paper. So you can put a nice, you know, there's not much point building up layers of thin washes. You might as well go into some strong paint straight away, because otherwise it just takes a lot longer. Obviously with the th the, these colours, you know, you'd use some thinner paint. So that's the beauty with watercolour, really, because you've got, you can use a thin wash or build up quite a strong amount of paint. I don't think I paint watercolour like most watercolourists. I've sort of evolved my own way of doing it, which is I do use some very odd brushes like this one, which is practically worn out. I, I don't know where I got this brush, and I'm 
worried what's going to happen when it's actually worn out because I can't find an another substitute. And I do, I, you know, I, there's quite a lot of sort of scrubbing sometimes. So I use oil painting brushes as well as watercolour brushes. So, and as well, tiny little brushes as well. So I use a variety of brushes. It's hard to describe, I think, probably maybe writers feel the same. You, so you, you just go into a, another place somehow and it's quite hard to describe what goes on because you just get completely lost in what you're painting and you're just really absorbed in it. And yes, time goes by very quickly. And I think you can take a certain amount, and I know after about like maybe three quarters of an hour, an hour, I just know I've got to take a break, so I'm going to make a cup of coffee or something, because it's quite concentrated work, really. And you get quite tired. I mean, I know some of you used to say, oh, it's lovely, you know, you just sit and paint all day long. Well, actually, it's jolly tiring. At the end of the day, I'm absolutely exhausted, because it is, it's, you're concentrating all the time. So it is quite tiring. And I do long hours standing here, and you get neck ache, back ache, everything else ache. <laughs> So it's, it's quite tiring. Sometimes I look at it and I think, gosh, I don't like that, that's really awful. And, but I put it up onto the slope and stand back from it and somehow it, it's sort of, I suppose a bit like oil painting, you know, you look at some of these amazing oil paintings and when you go up close, it doesn't make any sense at all, but when you stand back, you know, it all falls into place and it, it, it looks all right. So it's a bit like that really. And, and I get very worried about it and think, no, oh, it's terrible, it's not working. And then you put it up and you think, oh, yes, it's OK. It sort of makes sense when it's up on the wall. Because, I mean, these paintings aren't designed to look at very closely. They're designed to stand back from, really. Well, the whole house is a work, workshop, really. And I've got the studios here and, um, you know, so I can work and work upstairs or in the studio downstairs which is nice and this room is um sort of acts as a gallery i've had small exhibitions in here it's got a very nice atmosphere this house and it's quite nice to be able to just work and then you know take a break and go down into the town there's the devon guild down in the town which is, has a fantastic exhibition space and that's nice to go to and people are very very friendly so i can nip down and have a chat to somebody which is nice I have a studio downstairs, which actually is quite dark, but in some ways it's, it's got French windows going into the garden, which is quite nice in the summer. And because it's dark, I can light the subject. And upstairs is great. Um, there's more light, but sometimes it's too light. So, you know, I've got the best of both worlds, really. It's quite nice to have both. So I have got another studio at Dartington, which I go to sometimes, and that's quite nice to be able to go there and see other people and that sort of thing. I do also do um, artist prints. And actually, at my press, I've got a lovely etching press, which is at, at Dartington. I'm thinking of bringing it home, but um, it's there at the moment. And I do a printmaking course, which is fun. And so this, there's one or two, the, these are um, prints actually in here. So that's another side. And, and actually, there's quite a nice um, alternative to painting because it's more physical, it's more hands-on than painting, which is, um, you know, can be quite static in its way. So... I do enjoy doing printmaking from time to time and I'm a member of the Devon Guild as a printmaker. When people see my paintings, I suppose I want them to... There's a certain wow factor. factor. Um, I want them to feel the, the sort of sensuous quality of it. and I don't, I don't know. I suppose I want them to feel what I'm feeling, the passion of it, and to be excited by it. Um, and I hope that's what comes over. I mean, that's, <laughs> I suppose it's like the agony and the ecstasy. It's bloody hard work and it's an obsession. I mean, if I'm not painting, I'm not somehow quite happy. <laughs> and I love it. I mean, it's just what I live for, really, painting. And it is a complete obsession. But a great obsession. Jonathan is very supportive. I, I've been with Jonathan since the first exhibition I had in 2004. And he is very enthusiastic about my work and he's been, been really great. So he represents me as Jonathan Cooper at Park Walk Galleries. He keeps telling me I'm the best. 